There are multiple ways to build a dynasty roster, but we're going to cue you in on our favorite way to build it. Now, we'll preface by saying this. There are a ton of ways to build the dynasty roster. There is no one single right way, but we do have our favorite ways. There is our way. There is our way. We did it our way. Or I want it that way. Or tell me. Okay, anyways. So, again, this is our favorite way to build a dynasty roster. We're going to walk you through the steps of building a championship roster that we've had a lot of success with in the past. And so this is kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial of what we're going to be looking at here. But let's start with roster construction. Typically, you're going to build your roster in our new strategy, that whatever you want to call it. You call it the domain the domain way. That's or something like that. It's like Mike's way, but it's less on the juice and spices and stuff like that. But uh, we're typically going to build around two QBs. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're going to build less. Uh, we're going to, jeez, you got me all screwy now. Frick. We're going to build around two quarterbacks. We like building around dual elite QB. We've talked about all of our different team archetypes when we've done our blueprints and things like that. And our preferred way of building a dynasty team is to build around two QBs. Why? Because you're two. getting, and when you're doing a startup draft especially, you're never getting those elite QBs cheaper than you do in a startup draft. Mm -hmm. Ever. That's why I almost always go dual elite QB in startup drafts now. But even when you're, you know, Doing, doing something on an existing team, right? I'm going to go make sure I have two solid QBs to build around. And yes, I, I want to acknowledge that it's probably not going to give you an advantage in terms of like point scoring or chances of winning a single week or game by having two elite QBs versus having an elite QB and then having Kirk Cousins, right? Or having Matt Stafford. True. It's less about the production side of things and the winning singular game side of things and more about when you complete a season and you give yourself the best shot to win games. What's your value looking like when you go to reload next year, right? Yep. And, and uh, the foundation that we like to build for our teams is to have two elite QBs on our team. So we normally start there. And typically we have one safer option, right? Usually a pocket pass or somebody at safe, value installation, contract, all that, et cetera. Right. And then we go upside for the other one, right? So we might have, for example, and we're going to have um, an example roster that we're going to show all the way through this. So for quarterback, what does an ideal quarterback room look like for us? It's like an uh, ideal realistic quarterback. Room, I was going to say we're not saying Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. No, like that's, we, yeah, well, no. the ideal quarterback room is just to have Allen and Hertz and Mahomes all in the same roster and then call it like that's what you right, should do. Exactly. That's how you win yeah. dynasty. Yeah. No. So here's an here's an example of an ideal quarterback room in our eyes when we're building a roster. A uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, if you're starting, if you're doing a startup, Lamar Jackson in the first uh, and then take Brock Purdy maybe in the third. Um, or if you had an existing roster and you got Brock Purdy cheaper, then you Brock Purdy has been a huge value in you. Now you have a dual EQB mm -hmm. build with Brock Purdy. And maybe and, even a good third option as well. And then a good third option is key to any dynasty team. And so like a cheap option, our favorite cheap option at quarterback right now, like past the seventh round is Matt Stafford. Uh, he's pretty good. Like Bryce Young is a very good quarterback three, but he's also more expensive. So Matt Stafford's a little bit more realistic with the rest of this roster we'll build out. But again, that's a good example of somebody, right, with Lamar Jackson, uh, super high upside, rushing upside. Uh, he's also fairly insulated because of his contract but then you've got uh, Brock Purdy there who's just naturally a little bit more of a safer steady option um, less upside but you know there's going to be some security there and he's in a really good offense and then Matt Stafford again a productive veteran who you know is going to be able to plug into your lineup when you need him right and so it's important to have that third quarterback that third quarterback do not underrate that but it doesn't need to be anything special you don't need to have a triple elite QB build just a double elite QB build and from there we kind of focus on our wide receivers yeah wide receivers is definitely the second most important position in dynasty fantasy football if you're in one QB it's the first most important position in dynasty fantasy football yep. but with this it really is uh, getting high target guys and consistency I think consistency specifically is very very underrated in dynasty especially and you look for those high upside players and that is definitely a big part of it but consistency is going to save you a lot of times and maybe even lead you to a dynasty fantasy football championship as well and when you're looking at like kind of an ideal wide receiver realistic wide receiver room you want to have you want to have an elite guy locked down for sure hands down 100 percent. you want to have an Amon Ross St. Brown you want to have a Puka Nakua. You want to have a, I, I would still even throw Jamar Chase in there easily. Like C.D. Lamb or J.J. C.D. Lamb like or J.J. if you're lucky enough to get them earlier. Um, Garrett Wilson, I think, could be included in that Marvin as Harrison well. Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. right now. So there is, there's a plethora of, of elite wide receivers right now in Dynasty that you can take a shot on. And it's not even taking a shot. They're, they're insulated. They have contracts. Y you take them when you can. And then uh, you want to have a really nice, solid, high upside second receiver as well. If Nico Collins is your number one wide receiver on your team, I am scared as heck. If he's your second option on your team, I'm a little bit nervous, but I understand it and it makes sense from an upside perspective. 
Um, if he's your third option, you probably have a really good wide receiver room. If he's your fourth or in your flex, you have a wide receiver factory. There you go. That's that's what you got. Michael Pittman is a great also like second, maybe third option as well. I mean, his, his value, his price right now is getting to a point where if you have a wide receiver factory team, he could be your third option. Absolutely. And he's getting 160 targets in a year. Yeah. So um, don't say it's not going to happen again. It's 140. Big cool. production dip, only Big 80 production. to 85 touches. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and then some some other developmental guys like a Jackson Smith and Jigba at a discount right now. Jermaine Burton, Rasheed Rice kind of down the line. Those are people that have uh, r- produced like Rasheed Rice in samples. Um, some guys that are in situations where you know, like Jermaine Burton, is going to increase in value once T. Higgins is out the door because since he can't afford to pay Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and Joe Burrow on the same offense. So you play the market, you look for those value upside guys. That's definitely one of our biggest focuses here. And then high upside depth, right? Upside is great to an extent. You want to be safe with the upside. How how can you be safe with the upside? Um, By not banking your entire season on what they are or aren't going to do in your starting lineup. You better bet that those high upside guys are, are more of your depth options that if they work out and are super productive, they replace some of your other safer starters or they don't work out and you're down a little bit of depth and maybe you can survive and you're more of a well-rounded well, team. Then you but, go get veterans. Right, exactly. Like Deontay yeah. Johnson is another good example of a cheap wide receiver that's a veteran that you could plug in and really good depth. It's older depth, but older depth and upside depth, you kind of need to balance there. Yeah, and you do want to go with value insulation as well. What does value insulation entail? Well, age, obviously. So you want to get the most productive, youngest assets you can find. Those are generally going to be your cornerstone assets. Yep. How many of those can you realistically get on a realistic team that's not elite value? Um not a ton, but look at some of those mid-range guys. Look for those 26-year-olds. Look for those 20, uh, really 26 is kind of the sweet spot yeah. where they're approaching the prime of their career, they're productive, and they probably are in the midst of a extensive contract. I'm thinking like, a, like an A.J. Brown type guy who is continuing to fall in value, and he will not stop falling in value as he gets quote unquote, unquote old, yeah. which is ridiculous. But look, wide receiver factory is probably the most common team archetype that we see in our team blueprints that we do for our supporters over at flockfantasy.com slash domain. We do a ton of those all the time. And if you want one of those, you can go over to flockfantasy.com. You don't have to use code domain, but we strongly recommend you use code you get the domain. one-on-one advice. You get the one-on-one advice from us. You get 30% off of any additional blueprints that you want to buy. You are now able to buy as many blueprints as you want for as many teams that you have. You Boom. can do multiple blu- blueprints over, you know, six months on the same team if you want to because you're because teams change so often and value changes and fluctuates so much in Dynasty Fantasy Football. This never ends. Our feedback never ends for you guys. We want to do these blueprints for you. We want to help you win your leagues. That's what we're here for. That's why we do this. That's why we love it. That's why we started this channel. So go over to flockfantasy.com slash domain, use code domain and get 30% off those team blueprints. Yeah, and the links are going to be in the descriptions for both of those. We'd love to have you over there. But then we're going to focus on tight end next, actually. Uh, we're, so again, we're going to build our foundation at quarterback. We're going to get some good wide receivers and now we're going to move to tight end. And so with tight end, it's usually get a top four to six producing guy or fade completely. Like just don't even just don't even worry about it. So no it, top four to six producing, producing tight right? end. Yeah. And, and, and we're talking mostly tight and premium leagues. We're looking at our data from our blueprint submissions. About two thirds of our people play in tight and premium leagues at this point. I'm glad that has become the standard and we're going to encourage people to continue to do that as it really evens out the market and the production value between tight end and wide receiver, which is awesome. I, I think with tight ends, especially like there are some hyper productive tight ends, but for those middle of the road guys, it really kind of levels the playing field. But again, top four to six guy. Why? Because we sound, we found Pretty good data that suggests that you have a better shot at winning your league when you have one of those top four to six producing tight ends. And so in this example roster that we're going, is a good example of a, a good tight end room that we'd be comfortable with grabbing a George Kittle because George Kittle is consistently a top six tight end from a production standpoint, and he's also the cheapest. You're getting him in the eighth, ninth round right now. I mean, his, pri- his price is good. Too. Evan yeah. Ingram is, and then if you can't get, like if you need to go to an Njoku, you go to an Njoku, right? I mean, there are a lot of different yeah. options at tight end, but again, we like those top four to six guys, and Kittle has been one of the most consistent tight ends from a fantasy perspective in the NFL in recent years. So with that on this example roster, George Kittle, and then backing him up right now, super cheap is Dallas Goddard, right? So you've got two solid tight ends, two tight ends that are starting in the NFL that you can start week in, week out. Most of the time you're going with your stud, you're going with Kittle, who's playing on one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in the league. And you've got that little extra boost you need from your tight end position. But usually when we're talking about our ideal team, we want to like, hey, go get an elite tight end. Go get a Dalton Kincaid if you can. Uh, Go get a Trey McBride if you can. 
go get Mark Andrews. He's at a discount. You're, you're a one year reload. Go get TJ Hawkinson, right? And we're talking about these guys. And so with tight end, a lot of people will fade tight end, which I think is smart. Uh, and but if you're playing in a tight end premium league, there is an advantage to be had at tight end. So that's going to be our third step in like building our ideal roster is getting an elite tight end and kind of going with whoever's the cheapest at that point. Yeah, and then running back is generally going to be the last position that we have you prioritize unless, asterisk, you're investing in a rookie running back, but all rookies are pretty much categorized as their own assets because their value is so unique from from the rest of the playing field. So aside from your rookie running backs, right, that you can take shots on at their respective prices, we're, we're telling you to invest in running back last because it is, again, we did a whole video on this. It's the most volatile position. And you want to be looking for versatility. If you want to look for longevity and consistency and at least some sort of long-term reliability at this position, if you can get rushing and receiving upside in the same running back, Boom. then you're golden. Now, what's <laughs> what's a caveat to that? Most of those guys are the most valuable running backs in Dynasty. You can get some pretty good values in the later rounds, though, and we're going to give you a realistic some, some realistic targets here that you can get when you know we're having you prioritize QB and wide receiver up top. Can you get some values like that later down or, 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 or later on in your startup drafts? And there absolutely are. Rashad White is one of those guys. Um, he has the volume, not the efficiency, so that's a little bit of a red flag, but he has two he has two years left of a guaranteed situation because he's going into the third year of his rookie deal and they drafted Bucky Irving. Oh no, I'm so scared and terrified. Um, he is the dominant receiving back in that offense. If Bucky Irving takes away from his receiving upside, Rashad White gets the same amount of rushing volume that he got last year. If Bucky Irving takes away from his rushing upside, Rashad White's getting as much receiving usage as he did, as he did last year. Bucky Irving is going to be either or, one or the other, and I would anticipate he probably just gets some occasional receiving usage and, and provides fresh legs to help Rashad White be more efficient anyways. So that's that's a guy that we really like as a target. Um, Jonathan Brooks as well is another guy that, again, we said rookie running backs, good targets, very safe. They're kind of independent of you know your, your, your veteran assets um, in Dynasty, but we would consider him a, a good value at price right now and, and a guy that you could definitely have in a realistic build like this. Tony Pollard, he's got the... Rushing upside, he does. Yep. He had like, gosh, just under a thousand rushing yards last year mm -hmm. and before that mm -hmm. in a committee backfield. Um, and obviously the receiving upside as well. The receiving upside is what, uh, what makes us really comfortable with his safety and the contract as well. Um, Aaron Jones, again, if you're this Aaron Jones, it could be James Conner, it could be Zach Moss, it could be Austin Eckler, it could be who, who the frick else? Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, sure. any one of those cheap veteran running backs that has fallen in value significantly has already fallen off the age cliff and you know you're still going to get a decent amount of production at a severe discount just because they're old those are guys that you can have in your depth and you can plug and play anytime you want during the season as long as they stay healthy and that two to three year guaranteed situation that i that i alluded to earlier like with a guy like rashad white is what we want you to target when you're looking for running backs in this range you know, outside of your top corner, some ones which are, you know, guaranteed to be around for the next two to three years. Sure. You want to look for those outlier situations in the later rounds, right? Kenneth Walker doesn't necessarily have a guaranteed situation because of the danger of Zach Charbonnet. Sure. And Rashad White does have a guaranteed, relatively safe, guaranteed two year situation. Kyron Williams, kind of on the fence because of Blake Corum coming in. But you also have, who else in that range? DeAndre Swift. No one really competing with him in that offense other than Roshan Johnson, who's already been in that offense, and he's on a multi-year deal. He's kind of a nice dart throw going right where he should at price. So those contract-insulated assets that are, you know, after their rookie deal, you want to go for those two- to three-year deals or you want to go with those rookie assets that aren't going into the fourth year of their rookie deal. Yeah, and, and with running back especially, well, the one thing you'll notice about all those guys is like, you're looking at the five most valuable assets on this example team here. It's Lamar, it's Purdy, it's Amon Ra, it's Nico, and it's Michael Pittman, right? So you've invested your top five assets, your cornerstone assets are quarterbacks and wide receivers, and then you move to Jonathan Brooks, sixth round, seventh round ADP, Rashad White, sixth round ADP, Pollard, ninth round ADP, Aaron Jones, 10th or 11th round ADP, right? And so the nice thing about those guys is they do have the guaranteed situation, but their price is low enough to where if the volatility really does take over and you actually end up losing value on those guys you're taking a sixth round hit instead, instead of taking of a, a third or fourth round hit yes right exactly. and so that's why we like these middle of middle range running backs because a they're productive Rashad White was a running back one last year Jonathan Brooks he has running back one upside he's going I mean 
a guy second round draft pick. Let's not, you guys know how we feel about him. Pollard has been a running back one. Aaron Jones has been a running back one. All four of those guys have receiving upside. That's what we like to target. And you have the versatility there with running back. But one of the things you have to kind of balance when you're building a dynasty roster uh, and that we've kind of focused in on more is upside versus safety, right? You we talked about wide receivers being a really good example of that. Amon Ross St. Brown and Michael Pittman. They're very safe wide receiver assets. You know they're going to get a minimum of X amount of targets. They're going to get high volume. Uh, and then as a result, they're going to get a lot of receptions and they're going to produce like 10 points per game minimum every week with Amon Ra having a ceiling of about 20, 25 points per game and Michael Pittman having a ceiling of about, about 17 to 22 points per game, right? And so there's some safety yep. there. And then you've got Nico Collins, a guy who's going to get 110 to 120 targets every year, but he has those 30 point games, right? And he has the big playability. And when he does get a lot of touchdowns, you're talking about big boom week potential. And so targeting upside versus safety. You do want to look for sustainability to some extent. And we made a video about this with Brandon Ayuk and Nico Collins. Nico's a great wide receiver too, like Nathan said. But as a wide receiver one, you're going to want somebody that's going to have some more sustainability there or offer some more sustainability. But you're going to target the high upside boom guys uh, for the playoffs, right? You do want to have the guys that can score 30 points in a single game. Right, you do want to have those guys in your roster because when yeah. it does come down to actually winning games, there's only so much you can do to actually give yourself a better chance of winning a fantasy matchup or a dynasty matchup. But having some high upside guys mixed with some safe guys is good. You don't want to have all safe guys because then you're severely capping your ceiling. But you don't want to have all high upside guys because then you're, I mean, essentially risking that if you have a week where some of those guys don't hit you're bottoming out and losing, right? You don't want that. You want a good mix of those guys. You have to balance age as well. Age is important and obviously if you can get the, the youngest, most productive assets in Dynasty, you're getting the corner. So those are the guys that are going first, second round, right? Yep. That's why they're going there is because it's a value, it's a balance of age and production. And the guys who nail those two things are the most valuable assets in Dynasty Fantasy Football. But you do need to kind of have a balance because, again, you don't want to have a bunch of 27 to 32. A lot of times we see contenders load up on old guys. And it's very productive. You may win, but you have to balance it because... You can win, but then you're never winning again if you do that, right? So you have to have a balance. That's why you've got guys on this team, this example team, that are older, right? Uh, you've got George Kittle on this team. You've got Tony Pollard. You've got Aaron Jones. You've got Matt Stafford. Waiting in the wings, though. You've got Jermaine Burton. You've got Rasheed Rice. You've got JSN, right? There's some insulated, high upside value there. And so you have to kind of balance that as well. Ask yourself, are they consistent? That's a good thing. Consistency is great. Michael Pittman's a very consistent asset. Ask yourself, are they versatile, especially at the running back position? Can they also have receiving game upside, which gives them a higher floor? And if you can find players that have the receiving game upside with the higher floor and have a very high ceiling, a la mm -hmm. Brees Hall, then those yeah. are the guys you end up hitting big on. And, so and is their production sustainable? We just did an entire video on this a couple weeks ago where we looked at some of the wide receivers that have kind of some red flags here and there with their sustainability. And you definitely want to pay attention to that. I know we have opinions and we have excitement for players that we think could break out, but let's be honest with ourselves. Let's look at the historical, you know, uh, longevity of hyper production for people that get the volume consistently that like a guy like I gets and the, the variance in production is very, very wide in those ranges. So just be mindful of that, especially at the wide receiver position. Sustainability is a big deal there. Rookie picks is kind of our, one of our bigger things here that we want to focus on as well. This is a huge part of our overarching strategy. Yes. And this is a way that you can get a big leg up on your league mates when, when you're, you know, competing with them year in and year out. And uh, number one rule is if you can help it, do not trade your rookie picks. Sounds super simple, sounds super obvious, but it gets really, really tempting in the middle of the season to make a late uh, late season push to go to the playoffs and to try and win your league and win the championship. And there are scenarios and situations where that works out. We've done that plenty of times and it's ended up resulting in us winning leagues and it's resulted in us losing leagues and then we're out of rookie pick as well. Yeah. So there's give and take there. But again, our ideal rookie picks that you're going to have on a team, if if everything goes well and, and you have realistic values that you own all your future picks, you want that constant inflow of youth and value upside and rookie value insulation coming into your team year after year. I don't care if it's the middle of the first, beginning of the first, late first, they all, those first round picks carry value and they increase in value the closer you get to those rookie drafts as well. And ideally, we'd love to, for you to acquire in your down tiers that you're making some additional picks as well. It doesn't have to be a first. It doesn't have to be a ton of seconds. It can be one second a couple years down the road. It can be a third? multiple thirds going into next year. Small value wins is what we're trying to do here. This is what we teach, and this is what we this is how we play Dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then the last thing here, is, well, really the most important thing, honestly, is 
knowing where you're going with your dynasty team. That's knowing your team archetype. What type of team do I have? What is my build like and where do I want to go? And then knowing your three-year outlook. Dynasty is played in three-year windows. Keep playing dynasty in three-year windows. You will not be disappointed because having a three-year window and having a plan for three years at a time is very organized. It's also very achievable. And it also lets you formulate the moves that you're making to whatever your end goal is. Most of the time, that's going to be to contend at least by year two. It's important to know both of those things. And again, we give you both of those things when we grade your team because we think it is the most important thing. Your team archetype, yep. the three-year outlook, it it formulates every single piece of advice we give you on a blueprint. So that's going to kind of wrap it up here and that's because those things are really important. So again, if you guys want a team blueprint, flockfantasy.com slash domain, or you can go down and go straight to the team reviews, uh, we'd be happy to do a blueprint for you. We've got a lot of them in the queue. But again, this is a good way to get a plan for your dynasty team and to know what you're trying to achieve with your team so that you can make all of the right moves to make sure that you are eventually going to be winning your championship because that's what it's all about. Winning your championships because winning money because money is money cool. Money is cool. There you go. All right, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.